Just to be clear here, yeah. I did not know that you had some kind of celebrity. <laughs> Is that really your takeaway? I'm that? just saying, I want to make it clear that if I did know that, I might have been a little more <laughs> awkward. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you? Doing okay. You're looking pretty uh, sharp for a Q&A. <laughs> do we dress more casual for Q&As? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, do you feel ready to get to our Q&A questions? Yeah, I feel ready. Very ready. I'm All very, right. very excited to hear what problems people have. <laughs> All right. This first question is from Christina. Hi, Shandy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I recently ended a 10 month relationship. The man, 27, I was dating, 24, put in so much effort at the beginning of the relationship. We went on fun and unique dates, had amazing and frequent sex, and it just felt like there was a great connection there. I was hesitant to start a relationship because I had recently ended one, but I felt such a pull to be with him and was having so much fun with him, I felt like I was ready to try this. After he asked me to be his girlfriend, it felt like the effort immediately changed. We had sex maybe once a week, which I always felt like I had to initiate, and we stopped having fun dates. He soon began looking for another job a month after we became official, so I figured maybe he was focused more on his career. When I told him my concerns, he told me that he wants a house and a family in the next three years and that he doesn't see a point in working all the time if he can't have a family he cares for eventually. Personally, I don't subscribe to the whole marriage and kids by X year mentality, but I told him that if my relationship with my partner is healthy and it feels right, I could see myself wanting that too, and that I definitely wanted to pursue a serious relationship with him. I explained to him many times why his lack of effort bothered me and why I didn't understand what was going on with him, but he never provided a response I felt made sense. I was also bothered by his lack of including me in the future and always using, I'm going to do this, when I would say, I hope we can do this. He is not a shy man either. He goes after what he wants, and I have a hard time imagining him staying in a situation where he's unhappy. At one time, when I raised the issue again, he said he didn't know what was going on either and why he wasn't putting in as much work as I was to make the relationship work. Eventually, I ended things because I was tired of being the only one who was working hard to make the relationship happen, and it felt like he was clocking in and out of a job. My question is this. Why would a man who is so driven and goal-oriented in every other aspect of his life, who knows he wants a family and is working to have that happen, and made a huge effort with me in the beginning, suddenly stop putting in effort to make our relationship work? If he was unhappy, why wouldn't he leave first? And why would he make me be the one to break up with him? I will also add, when we broke up, he said he understood why I was doing so and seemed upset, but didn't make any effort to try to get me to stay with him. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing your insights into what could have been going on. Thank you, Christina. So the title of the email is, Why Do Men Stop Trying When They Have the Girl? Mm -hmm. Good question. Yes. Do you want to go? So I'm a little torn on this one. Mm -hmm. My gut says he wasn't that into her. Yeah, I think on the surface that's what it looks like, but I do think there's probably yeah. I don't a think we have enough evidence to make a you know an absolute call on this, but based on just what we know, mm -hmm. my feeling is he wasn't that into her. So you think that he got the girl and then they had a relationship together, and it's not so much that he was going to pull back in any relationship, but rather it was this relationship. Like he kind of lost interest. Well, I, I have a couple thoughts on this. Okay. One is I think it's possible. This is the kind of my caveat. It's okay. possible that his relationship style yeah. is to be really hot and heavy and then be like, okay, I'm bored of the sex. I just want this person as a vessel to give me a family. <laughs> And I, don't, I know that do sounds those guys crazy. Exist? They do. A they do. Vessel? But I don't think this is it. Okay. It's rare. That's okay. rare. But it does. That's a thing. Guys, I mean, like, honestly, I think it's because they're just not, they may not be that into women. Mm. Like, they may just, like, or into, like, the actual emotional connection. Right. right. I'm yeah. not saying they're gay. I'm just saying that they may not be that into just being with a woman, yeah. the whole process. Okay. And they may get quickly bored, but be like, well, this is a good woman on paper, mm -hmm. so I want to keep her around to give me my family. Mm -hmm. It's effed up, but <laughs> this is life, you know? Do you know guys like that? 
I have a couple of examples I can pull from. Okay. They're not friends of mine, but they're acquaintances. I know this exists. Okay. No, but, that's but, I appreciate that. But it's honesty. rare. So I don't want to go with this. Okay. I'm gonna go with the <laughs> most likely scenario, which is that he's not that into her. Okay. And if you lose passion that fast, mm -hmm. it's generally because you're not into the person. You need at least, the first year is passion. Yeah. At least six months of strong passion, well, at least minimum. It's interesting you say that because this was 10 months. Right. So it was over in 10 mm -hmm. months, which means it was well into him not wanting to, <laughs> to bone. Yeah. The bone zone's got to be six months bare minimum to a year mm -hmm. in the first year of relationship. But I will say this. The other thing that I th it think is a stylistic part of his relationship tactics okay. is when he's not interested, mm -hmm. he will make up excuses such as, <laughs> oh, I want a family now and you're not giving me that. He'll just find the thing that can make him look good. And this is this no, this I, happens all the time. No, I agree. I what I find interesting is that when she confronted him, I, and to me, this is her voicing her need. She's yeah. like, look, I feel like we're not, I mean, I don't know how how it played out. Maybe she was more aggressive. Maybe it wasn't done in a way that he would feel inclined to respond to in a right. in a productive manner. But what I find interesting is when she did bring it up, he was like, well, I want a family one day and I want this, this, this. Like, it's like, you're not really answering the question. No, but he's also deflecting. So yeah. he's like, he's like, oh, it's your fault. This is a common Ooh. tactic. And this is, there's many ways a guy will break up with a woman and mm -hmm. vice versa. But I, I don't know, I know mainly how guys do it, mm -hmm. but <laughs> not just, just from a friend. So, so one of the ways a guy will break up is that he will try to make himself look good by finding the thing that that person's not giving him. Therefore, huh. it's not him, it's gonna be her. So he can clean his conscience okay. and also have an out. So that's what I think he's doing. I think he's basically like, I'm not into this girl. I don't want this to really go. So what's the best excuse for me to look good, not to look like a dick, and for this to slowly end? which is to say, oh, I need a family now, knowing that she's not super keen Ooh. on the connection right now. It's a very, it's, it's this a- This is very convoluted, much more convoluted take than I was expecting. Convoluted, so, but not that uncommon. Okay, I think you're right in that I think a lot of men don't wanna break up. They would rather be broken up with. Yes. They don't wanna do the breaking up. He is finding a way and he was successful and his reaction tells everything. Mm. It was like, eh, okay. Yeah, so, she said he was upset, but he didn't fight for her back. It's you like, got it. First of all, everyone's have, upset. If you don't yeah, act yeah. upset with a breakup, then it's like they know you're, you, they caught your red hand. Also, even if you're not into the person who's breaking up with you, there's still just a little blow to your ego in bring, being broken up with. You have to be upset when you're broken <laughs> up. It's, it's mandatory. Whether it's real or not real, you got to be upset. So he did the, the minimum requirement of upsetness by getting broken up with, mm. but that's pretty predictable because the whole time he was trying to push it into her court. He was like, I'm not going to have sex with you. I'm not going to give you anything you want, but I'm also going to say you're not giving me the family. I don't feel the dedication here from you. It was a total uh, trap. I, uh, oof. I agree with you up until the point where he's kind of like, where you think he's sort of gaslighting her and thinking she's not giving him the, you know, I think that that's more like he was just deflecting, taking responsibility or really maybe having the tough conversation about the fact that maybe he's just not that into her anymore. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was just like probably something he pulled out of his ass during an uncomfortable sure. conversation. That could also be the case. I guess the question really comes down to how much do we take Christina's word for it that he really did pull back as much as she perceived him to have? Or is this just how he is in a relationship, like a little more content and not needing to have sex as much? I know plenty of guys who, when they're in a committed relationship, you know, they're just not as... Well, that's, you know, on, we're told by society that a guy wants sex whenever he can get it and he's going to initiate constantly. But I know from talking to many, 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 many people that that's simply not the case. It's possible that he was just in this and that's just how he is. He he, The novelty had worn off and he had fallen into a very comfortable groove. And maybe that just doesn't jive with what she expects. It's possible she has very high expectations for what an effort output looks like in a relationship. To be honest, considering the length of this email, I don't feel like I know that much. I don't either, but you're touching on my initial caveat, yeah. which is that this is this guy's relationship style. Yeah, 
It's totally possible. It's very possible. Yeah. In which case, she probably doesn't want to be with him anyway. So that answers another question well, it for sounds her. Like she's the, she wants to be in a relationship where even when you're committed, you're romanced. But what I think is interesting about this story is it really touches on the fact that just because you really fight for a relationship in the first place doesn't mean that when you've got it, it's really what you wanted. Of course. Yeah. It really touches on, I hate to say it, the chase. And I'm not saying that because he got her, he didn't want her anymore. What I'm saying is sometimes when you get it, you realize it wasn't what you wanted. Sure, of course. So I'm not saying he was bad in pursuing her actively. It's more so that maybe it just wasn't, you know, relationships end. This one was clearly meant to. And she has two answers. She does. And it's definitely one of the two. Mm -hmm. One is that's how he is. Yeah. And in that case, you don't want him. Yeah. So you did the right thing. And the other case, also you did the right thing, <laughs> is that he was basically just looking for an exit and he lost interest. Yeah. I wonder if her breaking up was meant as a bluff. Ooh. I, I say that because, you know, she ended it for this reason. I mean, not to not to discount the, the nobility of the human race, but I find <laughs> that in general, when the breaker upper yeah. is the one who's not getting enough of what they need. Yeah. So in other words, they're the one that's not getting the love they desire. Yeah. It is oftentimes inherently a bluff because they're oh, wanting yeah. more that yeah. they're not getting. Yeah. When the breaker upper is one who's like, I'm just not into this at all. Like, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. It's That's a legitimate breakup. Yeah. That's not a bluff. But it almost always is a bluff, technically speaking. When it's for a reason like this, where you're not getting something you wanted. And you've articulated that many times, as she seems right. to have. And that's not giving the human race much credit. What I'm saying is most people, when they're in the venue of love, mm -hmm. people act oftentimes with weakness. It's just human nature. Yeah. Many times, I'm not discounting. I know a lot of people out there don't know. I broke up with people who weren't giving me what I wanted and yeah. I did it. Uh, yeah, was, that's was, different. I mean, that's more of like an overriding thing. Like, yeah. oh, he's not what I need in life. Yeah. In this case, to me, this sounded like she had tried everything and had tried to have conversations about it. And at this point, she was like, well, you're not giving me what I need. I'm going to break things off. And I think she, based on how the email is written, yeah. was expecting him to fight. Yeah, but... To be honest, even though this was probably a somewhat calculated bluff, uh -huh. I think she got the answer she really oh. needed. Oh, my God. This is a classic case of thank God she did it now mm -hmm. and not in six months. Oh, 10 or months is year. like she's still in the trial period. Oh, That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my God. She People got out date clean. easily for 10 months without ever becoming exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess what is our answer? This was sort of more of a conversation than a Q and A, well, but the, the question she asked was, "Why do men stop trying when they have the girl?" I don't think that all men do this. This is a case by case. This situation. is case by case. We don't have enough evidence to pinpoint exactly why I did mm -hmm. it, but I will say that the two, like in Family Feud, that <laughs> takes up ninety eight percent of of the survey responses, yeah. is that that's his relationship style, much less likely, or much more likely. He just wasn't into it. Yeah, and he was forcing a breakup. He was forcing it into your court, and you took the ball, and you said, okay, I'll do this. You did the right thing. You got yeah. the right answer. Move on. You're good. That is the overriding takeaway here. Christina, you definitely did the right thing, mm -hmm. and yeah, good yeah, riddance. And good for you. Mm -hmm. it, takes, it takes guts. I mean, you know, it's not easy. <laughs> okay, moving on. All right, this next question is from H, as in the letter. Dear Shandy, love the show. I was psyched when Charlene announced she was starting a podcast and you guys haven't disappointed. Thank no. you, H. I really look forward to the episodes, especially love fests. I thought I wouldn't be into them, but they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I give you credit for thinking you wouldn't be into them. <laughs> It's reasonable. Whenever people say that about the love fest, some, I can kind of see what they mean. I like yeah. to think that they catch people off guard. Yeah. yeah. I like to under promise and over deliver. <laughs> yeah. And Both I of think us that's do. what the love fests are. Yeah. I'd love some guidance on a pretty light problem. I'm 32, single for the first time in a while, and I want to ask a semi celebrity out. The guy is local famous in my city in the UK. He's on TV. In American terms, he's probably like a local news anchor. When I mention this to my friends, only about half of them know who he is, and he's got about 30,000 followers. He's around 35, not yet a man, but in the ballpark. <laughs> 
looks. He's UK though. Yeah, yeah. It's UK different. adds three, four years. Yeah, he's a full blown man. Yeah, he's in a UK. man. Looks single according to social media and is definitely dorky hot. So I imagine he's been hit on a few times in his DMs. I have a slight in. We were working in the same industry, but for different companies. And I messaged him on Instagram once to thank him for some info he passed on to one of my superiors at work for me. He replied enthusiastically, but professionally. And I sent him back a message which didn't need a reply, but did leave the window open for banter. But he didn't message back. I was in a relationship at the time and my Instagram had recent pics of me and my boyfriend. So if he did investigate, he would have rightly assumed I wasn't single. That was about six months ago. I wanted your advice on what I should do to A, give me the best chance of him being keen to meet up and B, doing it in a way that doesn't make it awkward in the unlikely case he bites. I'd like to make it clear that I'm single. I don't use social media often, so some of my most recent pics, circa 2019, still include that last boyfriend. And we're friends, so I'm not willing to strip them out. This is way out of my comfort zone. I'm a pretty good dater, but I've never made the first move. Reaching out to him directly is really the only option. I don't work in that industry anymore. We don't know the same people, and it's super unlikely that we'd run into each other in person. Because he's a public figure and very active on social media, I can tell we're into the same things. We both do a lot of multi-day hiking and mountain biking trips. And over lockdown, he memorized the names of every country. I like this guy. I like him too. <laughs> She's got good taste. I memorized all their capitals, which is way harder, of course, but he's hotter <laughs> than me. <laughs> so it evens out, I guess? See, she said, so these things balance out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> But he knows Agreed. nothing about me, so I feel like I need to somehow drop some things in, although he would be able to see some of it on my Instagram. This is super low stakes. The only thing at risk is my ego, and I think I can take it. I would never normally do this, but I think the new year has me feeling a bit emboldened. Andy, you managed to chat up Charlene in a bar, and Charlene, I bet you got tons of DM sliders after The Bachelor, so I think you're the right people for this job. Should I go in mildly with a response to an Instagram story and a PS that if he wants to get a drink and chat about adventures, I'd be up for it? Or do I need to be more direct than that? I'd love your thoughts. Thanks a bunch, H. Hmm. Just to be <laughs> clear here, yeah. I did not know that you had some kind of celebrity. <laughs> Is that really your takeaway? I'm that? just saying, I want to make it clear that if I did know that, I might have been a little more <laughs> awkward. So who knows? But. But. Alas. Yeah. I have thoughts on this. Let me hear them. Okay. First of all, I don't think she needs to be nebulous about this. Mm -hmm. Just because based on my experience having received sliders, as she puts it, <laughs> I would way rather someone just cut right to the chase. Oh, I and so agree. Th the number one most important thing is that your profile isn't private, which it sounds like it's not. It sounds yes. like they yeah. kind of are extremely distant yeah, yeah. acquaintances. It's like six degrees. Yeah, I think it's important that your message, H, is just short, charming, maybe a little funny, to the point. Mm -hmm. Make it clear you're single. I couldn't agree more. I don't think dance around it. Everything you're saying is great. Oh, great. <laughs> just piggybacking yeah, off my answer. I may not say anything. Well, for me, it's something that always bothered me about the hit on, and this applies to DMs. The hit on? The hit on. <laughs> and this applies to in person or in DMs or whatever is the dancing around it. Like, I totally agree. Yeah. When it's not on a dating app, meaning, of course, you're all there to yeah. maybe meet right, a romantic exactly. partner. Mm -hmm. When it's in person or through Instagram or some other network that isn't dating specific, I just have never liked the mm -hmm. beating around the bush. Nope. Cut to the chase. You cut to the chase because then you both know what you're talking about. Yep. That way, politeness cannot be construed as interest. Exactly. Yep. And yep. so, H, I would say go in there cute. No more than, I would say, three or four sentences. At most. Yeah. Make it clear you are single mm -hmm. and you think he, you know, you're interested and maybe throw in something about both knowing the capitals of countries or in his case, just that, yep, the names wow. of countries. Just taking everything. You got yeah. It. And just see what happens. As long as you've got photos, yep. I hate to say it. That's yeah. really no, photos. I was gonna, yeah, I'm glad you took that from me. Well, I know enough men with lots of followers no, on Instagram yeah. yep. to know that that's really all they give a shit about. 
That's, I mean, it's, that's, that's it makes not, me sad. It's not all they give a shit about. It's it's a it's big screener. It's, it's like, like that first huge cut for a job offer. Like this is the yeah. best job. It's like the job of CEO. You got a hundred applicants. Yeah. The first cut's like okay, eighty are gone. Yep. So it's the first cut. He's gonna see. You have the luxury and the, the curse of having a public profile with all your pictures. So mm-hmm. he's right away going to be like, okay, I would consider this. Yeah. Not to give him all that credit, but this is life. I mean, we're not going to make believe here. Yeah. So he's going to look at that. He's if you British. Make, it's maybe slightly different. It may be slightly different. Yeah. He's, if you make the first cut, as Charlene eloquently said, the, the message should be short and sweet, should be a little funny, and there should be something very specific yeah. that you two share. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And once you've done that, you've done everything you possibly could do. Wait, you've sent, you basically are fishing with, in a, in a, in a fish tank with the best bait, just a delicious worm. <laughs> and if the fish just so happen to not enjoy that species of worm, you're out of luck, but chances are you're going to get a bite. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's important to remember too, that a lot of this is out of your hands. So you will write the email. And like you said, if, if he doesn't reply, it's really just your ego taking a small hit. There's, I really do think that 80% of this will come down to whether or not she's his physical type. Mm-hmm. The, also, yeah. we don't actually know that he's single. We don't. It's very possible if he's a semi-public figure mm-hmm. that it would behoove him to seem single. Yeah. I don't think that doesn't exist. Oh, that exists. Yeah. So, th- so much of this is out of your control. Just shoot your shot. Yeah. I know that's an annoying expression. I, but- you know, it, interestingly, as... As an aside, I did attempt to. Uh, oh my god! A news anchor, actually. Yeah, I did actually <laughs> attempt to to uh, get a date with <laughs> a fun. local news anchor. Yeah, this on is, LinkedIn. This is just, I'm not making this up. On LinkedIn, and I got a response. And honestly, I think I might have dropped the ball because I think she might have been game, mm-hmm. and I just didn't uh, pursue what it properly. After that? I don't know. There was a lot of back and forth, and I think I was playing a little too coy, like I was being too cool for school, and I should have just been like, "Hey, let's let's go out." I wanted. I think I might have actually done that too. I think I did everything right. She just dissed me. (laughs) I think the bottom line is I got dissed by a local news anchor. And how big a blow was it to your? It was literally negative blow. Okay. Like nothing. There was no blow. Well, see, that's the thing here is I feel strongly that even if it's a no, he's gonna at least respond and be like, "Hey." You know, I'm I'm not single or not really looking right now. Just something. So, you know, maybe at least she'll even get that closure. But even yeah. if she doesn't, this is just... Yeah. She's just throwing out a dart and hoping it lands somewhere. Yeah, it's fun. You know, you just don't be too cool for school and don't yeah. be too subservient. Yeah. Just be normal. Yeah. Act as if he's oh, on your level. Oh, that's actually a key thing. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Thank you for remembering that. A huge turnoff is any kind of like fanny language. Right. I'm a big fan of blah, blah, no, blah. not a big fan. Have been, look, have been watching you for a while. Any of that, that's not, I don't think that's cute. Yeah. It, what you can replace that with is something specific that he likes that you also like. Yeah. That's the connection. Mm-hmm. And it's a given that you know of him through some level of celebrity. Yeah. He knows that. It's already baked in. Yeah. So you're good. So don't mention yeah. any fanness. Yeah. No yeah. fanness. Don't be too cool, but don't be too... You know, Fanny. <laughs> okay, H, good luck. Oh, and keep us posted. Yeah. Juicy. Mm. Andy, you know we love a cereal when we are on the road and we still get it delivered to our various Airbnbs. I would say this. If you are looking for the shortest route to feeling like a kid again. Without the guilt. Without the guilt. Yes. On top of feeling like a kid. Yeah. No guilt. Yeah. Because if I had the opportunity to feel like a kid... I would expect there to be some guilt involved. Yes. Magic Spoon provides guilt-free enjoyment and the experience of feeling like a kid. And so you over there are eating the fruity flavor, which tastes exactly like... Toot Roops. Toot Roops. And my new favorite flavor, you know, I do love the peanut butter, but cinnamon is also very solid and tastes exactly like cinnamon roast... Punch. Punch. <laughs> Sorry, I had my mouth full of toot roots. <laughs> so while you're chewing away over there, I'm going to read some stats for the Shandies because the cereal defies logic. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. What's in there then? Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> Only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. And you can also build your own box. And some of the flavors include cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. So you can mix and match or just get all of one flavor if that's what you prefer. I love that variety. It really is just such a walk down memory lane. And a lot of us are not going to go and buy you know, the super sugary versions of these that we all know and love from our childhood. Oh, were there other versions of these? <laughs> I wasn't aware. So go to magicspoon.com slash Shandy to get your custom bundle of cereal and be sure to use our code Shandy to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. So remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Shandy. And use that code Shandy to save $5 off and we thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring the podcast. I have mixed feelings about being on the road, Andy. Yeah. My tushy is, is sad. <laughs> I was going to tiptoe around that a bit more, but you just went right to the point. Yeah. Without our Hello Tushy bidets affixed to our toilets at home, mm -hmm. we are just subjected to your average Airbnb toilets. Yeah. We are, we are now in medieval times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going backwards. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it makes me think that Airbnb hosts should think about Installing Hello Tushies. Yeah, on the Airbnb host site, it should say like <laughs> outdoor space, pet friendly, Hello Tushy bidets. <laughs> so in case you are new around here, the Hello Tushy bidet is a convenient little bidet that you affix to your existing toilet with no special plumbing needed. And it basically turns your regular old average toilet into a fancy one that sprays you. And with a Hello Tushy bidet, as we've said before, but we will continue to reiterate, it can cut down your toilet paper usage by 80%. So not only is that great for the wallet, but it's also great for paper waste. Yeah. And I mean, toilet paper, what, what's it like $80 a roll now? Toilet paper is getting ridiculous, at least in New York. And I don't think there's any product we've promoted yeah. that the Shandies have loved more. I mean, we get every day, we get someone saying yeah. how much they love the Hello Tushy. Mm -hmm. And they're not, they're not saying I bought the Hello Tushy because of you. Yeah. You're saying I bought it and I love it. Yes. It's the difference. So in case you can't tell, we want you, our audience, the Shandies, to have clean bums. Go to hellotushy.com slash Shandy for 10% off plus free shipping. Tag us and at Hello Tushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean bum with you. That's hellotushy.com slash Shandy for 10% off. All right. This next question is from Anonymous. Mm, mm -hmm. Dear Shandy, I love listening to your podcasts and always agree with the advice you give. So I'd love your thoughts on my dilemma. My boyfriend and I have been dating for over five years. We have a great relationship and I feel so grateful to have him in my life. All right. That's it then. <laughs> next question. Despite this, over the five years, I feel like my boyfriend is always the one giving more affection and going above and beyond to show his love to me. And I worry that maybe he doesn't feel it's always reciprocated. Mm. We've talked about marriage and we talk about being each other's forever person. So I want to propose to him. Ooh. I love the idea of taking charge and surprising him since he's more giving in the relationship. Mm -hmm. But since men usually propose to women, I don't want him to feel like I took away a momentous time or memory from his life, especially since there's a possibility that he's thought about proposing to me before since he's such a romantic. What do you guys think of this idea? Should I go for it or let him do it in the more traditional way? Thanks, Anonymous. Hmm. So do we get their ages? Hmm. Good question, Andy. We did not. Ah, Anonymous. That's too bad. That's too bad. Tisk. Tisk. Yeah. You always agree with us, but you're not listening <laughs> to the instructions. So they've been together five years. I think we can guesstimate somewhere between I'm gonna say 28 and 36. That's kind of where I was thinking. 28 and 38? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in there. That's tough. I mean, it could really be anything. I just want to make sure it's a very reasonable proposing age range. Yeah. Like I, if they're been dating since they were 14. It's, no, it's you're right. Weird. If they're if they're 23, yeah. they've and been if, dating and, since 18. And if she and they started dating at 36, you know, there's a lot of okay. age is a big thing. Yeah, here. we've shamed her enough. We yeah. don't have their ages. Okay, we're gonna assume 30. just on Let's the total 30. averages, they're both 30. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just go based with 30. on 
shandies, yeah. the shandies out there and the age, the average yeah, age the demo. of people writing We're going to assume she's straight demo. Yeah. <laughs> so she's probably 32, her husband, I'm sorry. No. no. <laughs> ah, not sure yet. And her, her boyfriend yes. is 33. Okay. They okay, seem like kind of couple this. with a one year difference. Yeah, we're going with okay. this. I, I feel good about that. Okay. Okay. So this is a tough one. Mm-hmm. This is a tough one. I personally feel that in general, <laughs> it's a man's job to do this. So this is again why ages would matter because if she revealed that he's 45. Mm hmm. Then maybe there might be a problem. He's maybe more traditionally inclined, mm-hmm. but would a thirty-year-old care? So okay, let's because I think I know what you're getting at. Let's say I had proposed first Dude, to you. I think it would have been weird. I would have been <sighs> fine with it. Either with way, that. we're getting married. Yeah. Okay. I would have felt. This is what I would have felt. I would have felt like my thing was taken away from me. Okay. I would have felt happy. First, I would have felt happy. Like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah, my, especially since it would probably be very romantic. Me. and Oh, it would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. My ego would be through the roof. Yeah, yeah. It would be incredible. And I'd be thrilled, you know. But at the same time, I'd be like, oh, that was really the thing I was supposed to do. And I kind of would feel a combined remorse about dropping the ball or maybe I should have, you know, if she had done it, that must have meant that I should have done it a while ago. Like I, I missed the signals. Uh, and number two, I would feel like that's something I'll never get back. Like I'll never have proposed to my wife. And that as, as a man propose. who is a traditional man, I'm a traditional man. I'm Gen X. What can I say? I can't escape from that. I would feel like <laughs> there was a wrong that will never be righted. Okay. Wow. Okay. Ooh. So you knew we were going to disagree on this. Yeah. I think. I could tell your delivery. Yeah. I'm in disagreement mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, I feel that maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you spoke with a lot of caveat flavor. Yeah. I f- but I mean, it's I feel like we're past this. Yeah, it's yeah. sort of it kind well, of reminds me of like the changing names thing. It's like, does a woman really need to change her name? No. Does a man really need to propose? No. I don't really see the big deal here. I think that it would probably be seen as a beautiful gesture. Again, this is assuming he wants to this get married. Is, this is something we need to discuss. <laughs> yeah. So I agree with you. I don't disagree with you. I know that it's a generational thing, and I know yeah. that I'm a little set in my ways on this. Yes. And I can't fully appreciate the other side. But I 100% agree with you that I think it's totally fine for her to propose. The question is, after five years of a supposedly great relationship, why hasn't this guy gotten off the pot? Ooh. That's my question. She said, we've talked about marriage and we talk about e- being each other's forever person. Okay, but why hasn't he done it? <laughs> why, why, why is, why I is he I don't want to instill doubt in Anonymous's mind about this. But I don't, the question she's asking is not a question. It, it's, it's, okay, okay. It's a generational thing. Fine. She does it as cute. He may be happy. Maybe he won't. Who cares? The issue is, why are you at the point where you feel like you need to propose. That's the issue. Oh, whoa. Okay, so you're digging a little deeper here and you think that her wanting to propose, that her wanting to do it as this grand gesture of love because she doesn't feel like she expresses it enough is really her just kind of tired of waiting to be proposed to. That's what I'm saying. Oh my God. I didn't take it that way. I'm just, I, I hate to put a negative spin on it. That but, is a very negative spin. But this, this is the situation. Uh, I want to take this at face value because I, I, otherwise there's so many hypotheticals. This is a one paragraph question. It could be that he's dragging his feet. Maybe he's been wanting to exit. Like, I don't picture that being the case, but I don't want to instill doubt. She wants to propose to him because she feels it would be romantic and she wants him to feel loved. I'm going to take her at her word. And if she's lying to us, then that's her fault because I want to answer the question she's asked. The question she's asked is an easy answer. It's like, just go ahead, propose. Who cares? (laughs) (laughs) I don't care. I guess my point is anonymous. If this, like, there's no judgment here. If you wanting to propose is really just a facade for you being like, where's my proposal? Look. And it's under the guise of making him feel loved. 
then we're not going to answer that because you weren't honest with us. That's right. I stand by. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what generation it is. A man should propose no, no. to a woman. No, this period. is period. No. Nope. But if, just, if you must, if you must propose, you must ask yourself, why hasn't he proposed? Five years. No one should be in a relationship for five years as a man <laughs> without proposing. Period. No. No, I'm saying, I'm telling the truth here. Well, we've had- Enough with this bullshit. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Why hasn't he proposed? No, okay. It's too long. Five years is a don't, long time. No, half a decade. Don't instill doubt. Don't instill doubt. We've had a caller on before who had been with a guy for five years. You didn't say this to her. Well, she was right in front of me. It's easier. <laughs> it's, this is easier. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. <laughs> okay. Anonymous. I think if we're to take your email at face value- Yes, you're fine to propose. I disagree with you, Andy. I think if you wanted to get married to me, and that's the big that's the big uh, disclaimer yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did want to get married to you. Yeah. And I did propose very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because that's what a man does. <sighs> Age matters here. Not to make this circular. The only way it matters is if they're in their, I would say, mid-20s. I'll give it to him. If he's under 27, I'll give it to him. If he's under 30, I'll give it to him. Uh, you, there are many couples who date for five years, five 10 years. years. I've never had a five-year relationship. I had at yeah, but, okay, max but three years, and that felt really long. But then we're coming back full circle to the fact that you're a traditionalist. There are many people who don't even feel the need to get married at okay, all. Okay, well, then that's another question. Does he, has he, does he not want to get married? And why doesn't he want to get married? And if that's the case, then she shouldn't propose. But if he doesn't want to get married, he's not going to say She's, yes. She says they've talked about marriage. And being How fair. have they talked about marriage? We don't have enough evidence. We don't have enough information. I do have to agree with you on that. Okay. I would suggest listening to Jacqueline Trumbull and Paul Selly's Love Fest because they proposed to each other. They talked about marriage at length. They even had their wedding date set. And then they proposed to each other and it was a big surprise and a big celebration and it was mm. really fun. And he loved it, by the way. But again, they already had their wedding date so I'm, I'm not yeah, sure how different. far along things are here. It's possible that she can give him his big romantic gesture proposal and she can do that after he proposes. <laughs> yeah, she could do a post-proposal proposal. <laughs> a post-prosal. <laughs> okay, to wrap this, Anonymous, I'm taking your question at face value. Go for it. If he feels that that honor or that big momentous thing was taken away from him, it's because he waited too damn long. I agree with you only for the for one reason. I agree with you because she needs to get on with her life. Yes. And he's taking too long. Yes. What I will not agree with <laughs> is that a man is not expected to propose to a woman, period. Uh, That's it. Disagree with me all you want. Say it's generational. It's the way it always has been. It's the way it always will be. And there's a reason for it. It's biological. Deal with it. That's the way it is. You're going to make a lot of people very angry. And no, I'm I can, not. I can already smell the For comments. all the people who are going to be angry, there are going to be a lot of people who are nodding their head voraciously. Yeah, but it's the people- Vociferously. The people who disagree with you are the ones who are yeah, more the ones inclined nodding to their leave head comments. Don't, yeah, no, nodding their head, they don't leave comments. <laughs> They just nod silently while I get roasted online <laughs> by the people who don't nod. Ugh, it's so true. Okay. I think we've answered this one to the best of our abilities with the very little information provided. I knew we probably wouldn't see. I agree with you. But I want to make it clear. I agree with you. I, I am setting aside my generational feelings. Okay. I agree with you. But, but I agree with you for different reasons. I'm, I'm taking it from a different perspective. Okay. My perspective is... This has got to go somewhere. Yeah, I And it's got to go that. somewhere fast. I do agree with that. But it's very possible he's been planning something. And and and, and just think of how he's going to feel when she proposes to him. He's like, oh, <laughs> I really was planning on doing something and you screwed it up. That is good food for thought. Oh, I, I unfortunately cannot help but tell the truth. And I think my truth is true. <laughs> and I think mine is as well, an anonymous. It's 2022. That's all. Might as well be 1522 <laughs> as far as biology is concerned. All right, moving on. Okay, I'm going to give you two titles and you tell me which one you would rather. Okay, it's a rare, a rare choose your own adventure Q&A, Andy. Help, I have a crush on my manager or help, I can't stand my husband's best friend. 
Do 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 do. I think I'm saying the Jeopardy music in the last Q and A too. Yeah, we do a lot of Jeopardy. Um, I I won't wait till the end of the music. I I'm gonna go with the manager. Okay, I thought you might. Yeah, these turn me on too. All right. All right. Okay. This next question is from Anonymous. Mm. Dear Shandy, I'm a big fan of your podcast and previously of Charlene's blog recaps. Oh, thank you, Anonymous. And I'm writing with a dilemma that I'm hoping you can help me with. I am a 32 year old female living in the New York metropolitan area. Back in July, I started a fantastic new job at a company with great benefits, people and opportunities for growth. And banging. (laughs) Oh, I just, I know the ending to this. While the company has several offices in the States, including one in New York, we've been primarily working remotely due to the pandemic. So I've never met the vast majority of my coworkers, but we interact very frequently on Zoom meetings and our team message channels, and my team in particular is very close-knit. While my primary manager has been on paternity leave for the past few months and will continue to be for the next month or so, I've been reporting to one of the other managers on my team, and he is my reason for writing in. I don't know exactly how old he is, but I believe he's a few years older than me and lives in a major Midwest city. Even from our virtual interactions, I know he's smart, fit, attractive, soft-spoken, and caring. Oh, guy gives a strong Zoom. (laughs) My grandmother passed away very suddenly about a month ago, and I found out only a couple of hours before I was supposed to have a one on one meeting with him. When in that meeting, I let him know I might need some time off and explained why. He was extremely warm and empathetic, and we shared an emotional moment about how special a grandmother's love is. He made sure I was able to leave early that day and took care of explaining to the team why I was taking time off so I didn't have to, and continued to check in on me over the next week or so, even while he was away on vacation. Now that I've accepted these feelings, how do I navigate this? My primary manager will be back in about a month, so any weird power dynamic-y things that could be issues won't be, as I'll no longer be reporting to the one I'm crushing on. However, we're not local to each other, and we are still going to be working on the same team. There's also a possibility that I could be reporting directly to him again, depending on the trajectory of my career at this company. Should I just accept these feelings for what they are and try to ignore or move on from them? I don't want to jeopardize my job or make things awkward for anyone. I don't know when or if I would even meet this man. If it's worth bringing up, how would I even do so? We meet every other week to talk about my performance slash career, etc., which is the most direct interaction I have with him. But once I no longer report to him, those meetings will end and I'd have to come up with another reason to have a conversation with him. Doable, but a bit trickier. Never mind the logistics of actually arranging to meet up if it ever got to that point. I would really appreciate your advice and insight here, even if it's just to say a workplace romance isn't worth it. Thank you for your time and consideration. Uh, you don't seem to find this as yeah. fun as you thought you would. <laughs> yeah. Nah. 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 This what? is a this oh. is a non-starter. Ooh. Yeah. I think that this is a little too much. I think she should let this one slowly back into live. the bushes on this one. Oh. Yeah. And look, that's not to say you can't be super flirty when you have one-on-one with him Mm -hmm. and put it in his court. Mm, Maybe you never know. Putting it in his court, he can't make a move on her. Okay. But he literally cannot make a move. Neither can she. It's bad. She's may work for this guy again. It's a big He is her superior and he's the man. If anyone's gonna make a move, it's her. But I am inclined to agree with you. I don't know if there's enough here Mm. to cling on to. There's not enough of a like a ridge to sort of dig your fingernails into. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of like it's like a smooth ice ice wall that goes like this way <laughs> it goes the wrong you're way you're trying to climb back yeah you, you got an ice pick while your feet are hanging yeah, over the yeah it's ledge. like oh my god the alpinist oh god don't even it's okay too much. okay but it's also amazing the alpinist yeah. is really Oof, good you should see that <laughs> okay yeah no i say no 
I say no for many reasons. One is there's no spark there just because, you know, her grandmother died. The guy's giving her sympathy, empathy. Like he, she already established that he was a good guy. Like that's, that's nothing. I, I wouldn't put any weight on that. Yeah. Um, number two, there may be a, a, a future working situation here where he's your superior again. It's very, it's very, it may be very sloppy um, in the future. I don't think you want to jeopardize your career. I don't think you want to get him into potential trouble i just think stay away from this he lives in the midwest you're in you're in new york city it's, it's like there's a lot of problems with this mm. i would say just just so you 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 can leave giving it your best shot <laughs> i would say just be like overtly flirty see if he makes a move or see if he changes his tone see if he takes the bait and then you can make another secondary decision maybe you go for it but i feel that not enough here to make the move too much risk I, I just say walk away. Yeah. While part of me wants to be like, yeah, go for it. Shoot your shot. You never know. Mm -hmm. I think shitting where you eat is a real thing. And we've talked about oh, yeah. that before on this podcast yep, and yep, certainly yep, in yep. Q&As. Yep. And I think if you're going to officially take that shit where you eat, yeah. you better be damn sure. Well, you you better be, be damn sure there's a really well-functioning toilet next to where you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't even seem to really know if he's single. Yeah, I feel like she enough. would mention that. And the main interaction that she's really clinging on to, like you said, is a moment of empathy. Yeah. And it's not, while it's not. it speaks to him being like a sensitive, kind person, and that's lovely and certainly something we should all yeah, hope for in a partner, enough. I don't really get enough of a vibe that it's specific to her. Mm -hmm. So... It, it it pains me a bit to say this, but I, anonymous, I think I'm going to agree with Andy. Look, one day there may come this like company retreat yeah. or he'll come to the city or you end up in his city, in which case, absolutely. Yeah. You, you never could be know. like, hey, I'm in your city randomly. Yeah. Like, do you want to meet for a coffee? And then. I'm telling you, so <laughs> I do think a lot would become clear very quickly under those circumstances. <laughs> that wasn't very good music. I enjoyed it. It was better than it deserved. The porn music would have been worse than that. <laughs> I'm giving myself credit for writing, composing a great score. I mean, it was appropriate because yeah. there is an element of I'm in your city. Yeah. Hey. Oh, we work together. Fancy a coffee. But I do yeah. think that this there isn't enough here to hang a hat on, unfortunately. Nope. There is not. Yeah. And I I want to be that person. I want to be that your cheerleader who's like, go for it. You never know. Yeah. But I do think there needs to be something a little more personal. If she said that they exchanged phone numbers. And yeah. in addition to these weekly check and zoom meetings, they were sending each other. Flirty messages, maybe something like that. Just something that felt out of the business realm. I always feel that in work situations where there is some real risk, mm -hmm. as opposed to like lateral work situations and they have a policy where you can do whatever you want and then it's like, who cares? Yeah. I always feel like if it's not the equivalent of shooting ducks in a barrel, watch out. Yeah. <laughs> That's my strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Words to live by. Mm -hmm. All right, Anonymous. Sorry if that wasn't what you wanted to hear. You can still do whatever you want. Yeah. You don't have to listen to us. And then tell us all the dirty secrets. Yeah. If you want to not listen to us, go ahead and then tell us what happens. I would love to be proven wrong. Me I would. Too. Oh, there's if no one. If she wrote back in a year like, and was like, by the way, I did drop him a line and now we're engaged, I'd be like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want that to happen. Of course. I just, I wouldn't no. bet on it. Yeah. Watch out. Just be careful. Okay. So, Andy, I have decided that 2022 is the year of my finances. It's time to be an adult. That's, is it like the year of the rat? <laughs> it's not a very exciting year. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't sound fun, does it? But it is made a little bit more fun by Truebill. In case you are new around here, Truebill is an app that you connect your bank accounts to and your credit cards to, and it will help you identify and cancel unwanted subscriptions. Now, this is a really big deal because a lot of companies out there will automatically renew what might have started out as a free trial as a year-long subscription. Mm -hmm. And you notice how they don't give you a reminder 
Yeah, they don't. They the don't internet is email. great. Like yeah. the internet does great <laughs> things. You get the email. The internet is great. You got the YouTubes. <laughs> you got you got like you know Googles. Yeah. But what it's not good at is letting you save your money. No. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's not good at that at all. you got to watch out. The internet's out to get you. It really is. Yeah. And Truebill is one of those few companies that is on your side. Yeah. They make it possible to cancel all of your unwanted subscriptions with one tap. And worth mentioning, on average, people save $720 a year with Truebill. So like that little $5 subscription, that $10, $8, whatever a month that you don't really notice because it's not enough money. That adds up. I also like the fact that they alert you to large transactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. So you uh, look, oftentimes you do large transactions, uh, yeah, yeah. but sometimes you don't do large yeah, transactions yeah. and someone else did it. It feels like they're in your corner. Yeah. And when the whole internet is out to get you and your wallet, it feels nice to have that safety net. You know what they're like? They're like a night watchman of the internet. <laughs> So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash Shandy. So go right now to Truebill.com slash Shandy. It could save you thousands a year. That's Truebill, T-R-U-E-B-I-L-L dot com slash Shandy. All right. This next question is from S as in the letter. Hmm. Dear Shandy, I absolutely love your podcast and so enjoy hearing your takes on the show and on relationships. Thank you, S. My question is about a very minor annoyance in my wonderful relationship. Ooh. I'm newly engaged to my fiance. We are 30 and 31 and both grad students in the same field. He's my perfect match. We have a great intellectual connection, shared values, great chemistry, easy humor and fun together and a loving relationship. I'm so thrilled about our life together. My question relates to my annoyance with his singing voice, <laughs> which I think is not good. I haven't told him this, Ooh. but which, okay, Ooh, okay, this sorry. Bad, this is getting bad. <laughs> I'm getting uncomfortable. Okay, so she, so her annoyance is with his singing voice, which she thinks is not good, but she hasn't told him that, but which he thinks is great. Oh, dear. And his oh dear. frequent loud use of it. Oh. The trouble is that he's grown up in a musical family, received oh. some classical singing training oh, as part of his education. Oh, this is like a horror movie. <laughs> Don't go in the house. And singing is a very small part of his profession. He works in a church. His parents and people who hear him singing in church as part of the congregation compliment him on his voice, oh, which mistake. I think adds big to the mistake. trouble. <laughs> Never do it. Never do it. My sister agrees with me that his voice is not great. He often sounds off key. Mm. I am not a singer by any means either, but I'm very self-aware about this fact and try not to inflict my poor voice on others. He loves <laughs> singing at home. Which I certainly don't want to take from him. But when we're with his family, there's sometimes pressure to join in group singing with them where I try not to be too annoyed by his loud voice. Oh, dear. Overall, I feel that it's a relatively minor annoyance in comparison to how much I love him and how great our relationship is. Lately, he's been talking about trying to sign up for increasing singing run. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is like, it's like, don't go into the basement. Don't go into the basement. <laughs> it's a horror movie. This is what I'm saying. It's Lately, movie. he's been talking about trying to sign up for increasing singing responsibilities for his work. I feel that I cannot be the person to tell him that his voice is bad. It's such a part of his identity at this point, and I feel that it would be a blow coming from me. Should I just trust that someone else will point it out at some point? How should I handle it if he's eventually hurt by someone pointing it out? Any advice here would be helpful. Thanks. Ask. Okay. <laughs> First of all, my condolences. This is <laughs> awful. Um... <laughs> I, I mean, I have an idea. It's amusing. I, I should it's, it's obviously amusing. Yes. Look, she's got a good relationship. Anytime someone's got a good relationship yeah. and this is the kind of thing that's yeah. the problem, we yeah. can make it's fun like of the them. red roses one. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like you're good. You're good. Okay. So I have an idea for this. Okay. And uh, it's going to sound really, really base. Okay. But this is my idea. Okay. You cannot tell him he's got a bad voice. It's too late. You missed that chance. You missed that chance a long time ago. What you can do, though, is pay someone. <laughs> now, someone in that church is probably hard on cash, you know, out of work, maybe. <laughs> it's 
It's tough times out there. A lot of people are struggling. Yeah. <laughs> and a couple of hundred bucks might do the trick, save you a lifetime of trouble. <laughs> I know this sounds like a joke, but this is what I would do. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. You would wouldn't do, do this. I totally do it. Okay. Put yourself in her shoes. You're dating the woman you love. It's your fiance. You want to spend your life with her. And you can't stand her singing voice. You're telling me it's you would pay late. someone to tell her? That's not true. I'm a coward. It's too late. No, I, I, I don't would think either you're a coward. I think that she obviously shouldn't tell him. She can't tell him. But she's not going to make someone else do it. This Absolutely is just, she is. No. I can't tell whether you're joking or not. I'm both. It's both funny, but also serious. Okay. And I, and I honestly think someone will take her up on it. No. Okay. That's... There are just some things in life I personally believe that need to come to a head on their own, like without any interference. Yeah. And unfortunately, S, I think this might be one of those things. I also, I, I would like to admit that I am joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it would be pretty funny. I mean, that's like a movie. That's a rom-com movie. It, it won't work. This really reminds me of something we've been talking about lately, actually, not on the podcast, but just between the two of us, where I, I think that a huge part of singing is just being on key. You don't even have to have that nice voice. If you mm -hmm. sing on key, most people with untrained ears are going to be like, oh, good singing. Yeah. Then after that, as you've said, it, it becomes all affect. Yes. Just, as long as you're on key, you can just throw in as much spice as you want, yeah. anything you want. Your yeah. voice could sound terrible. Look at Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's got great pitch, terrible voice. <laughs> One of the most beloved singers of all time. I do think there's something to be said for that. And it kind of sounds like her fiance has all affect and hasn't really. Or maybe it's just all pitch. bad. It's, affect is bad. Pitch is bad. Everything's <laughs> bad. Who knows? The fact that it's so loud tells me that affect is not really nailed. What, just, I'm going to, I'm going to. Let me, let me just add something to this because okay. I'm starting to feel uncomfortable for her. I feel bad. I feel bad this for is her not, too. This is, ju this is funny, but it's also not funny because she has to live with this for the rest yeah, of her life. Yeah, and you never want this elephant in the room, no. this thing that you don't feel comfortable discussing with your partner. This is what I would do. Aside from maybe, you know, paying someone off, which I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason. I mean, look, everyone's got a price. Let's be honest. So the, anyone in that church will tell him he's terrible at singing for the right price. But, you know, let, let's not go to that. So... This is what I would do. This is what really I would do. Okay. At certain times when it seems mildly appropriate, you might want to say, hey, could you keep it down? I'm trying to like concentrate on something or I'm trying to focus or it's really just, just like I'm, I'm a little stressed out. Just keep it down a little bit. And if you do that enough, <laughs> he's going to start to take the hint. Uh, part of me doesn't want to take this joy away from him. Yeah, but it's causing her more pain than his joy. No, maybe, maybe it's equal. Either I don't know. Way. He seems to get a lot of joy out of his singing. It's sort of like if I had this talent or this talent that I was really bad at and I was like, look, I'm, I've painted another painting. Let's say I painted a, a new painting every week. Oh, I would week. tell you it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would take joy in that. But you're so good at so many things. If you just made terrible paintings, I'd be like, ha, ha, ha. This is terrible. Let's say, though, it really brought me so much joy. I was like into my painting. I looked forward every week to my painting. Well, then it's it like would, painting day. But then I would have to be getting the joy of making fun of it. Would you take that away from me? This is a deceptively hard one because on the surface, it's like, absolutely not. You cannot tell him. No, you can't tell him his singing's bad. You can only hint to him that you think it's bad without telling him or pay someone. <laughs> it always comes back. <laughs> but when you look a little beneath the surface, there is an element of if she's not honest with him, who will be? He, she's his partner in life. No one's going to be honest with him. No. Nobody. It's up to you. No. <laughs> okay. And it's like I would compare it to this. You know, I, I'm upset that I started with the payoff. That's the easiest way. <laughs> but it's also really, really messed up. But I would compare it to like Shawshank Redemption, where the guy's like, you know, with one spoon a day taking the, the, the stone out of the wall, mm -hmm. you know, like the sand, dumping it in the yard, coming back. And eventually he makes that, that tunnel yeah. through into the sewer and everything. It's yeah. great. Tremendous movie. But that's what you kind of have to do with these situations. You have to literally think of his singing as a wall out of Shawshank prison. <laughs> and you have to every day take a spoonful of that wall and dump it in the yard. And one day... You will find your way to that sewer pipe. Okay. 
while you gave that magnificent analogy, mm-hmm. I've come up with the answer here. Ah. I think, S, and this is coming from a singer, I think that you should suggest that he take voice lessons again. Mm. Because let's. this is what professionals do. I take voice lessons. What you're basically saying is you're so great that you should keep taking voice lessons and then let the voice teacher deal with his pitch issues. That's a great idea. Wow, right? we've really, I think we really fleshed this one out. Yeah. At first I thought this was an easy payoff, <laughs> but now you're right. I think I'm right because yeah, look at it absolutely this way. Right. You could really fix both issues here. Oh my God, no, I got it. Uh, we solved it, it's done. <laughs> this is great teamwork, okay. I got it. This uh-huh. is the easiest thing ever. Okay. This is the easiest thing ever. Wait, what did you just Oh get? my God, this is, she wins for Christmas or whatever the next holiday is because God forbid you have to wait till Christmas listening <laughs> to this singing. But for the next big thing where he gets a present, yeah. you buy him a gift certificate, 10 voice lessons. Yes. And that person is paid to tell him he sucks. No. <laughs> That's their job. To, to fix some te- it his doesn't matter. technical Call issues. what you want. They've got to call him out for what's wrong. And you buy in these lessons. You're paying, instead of paying someone in the church, bribing someone to tell him he's terrible, which by the way, I, I, I was kind of joking, but, but it, it could work. Instead of paying that money, buy him a gift, pay a lot of money, an uncomfortable amount of lessons. No, that's a 10, yeah. 10 voice lessons with someone decent is expensive. Yeah, but he, so. if, if you buy if you buy like two lessons, you may just take him and just forget about it. Get him enough lessons where she, <laughs> she or he has to get to the point where they're <laughs> like, you are not good at this. Literally all of your advice for S is to throw money at this problem. <laughs> it's. I mean, is that not the best way to deal with things? If you can, if you can afford it, there's nothing better than throwing a little money at something and making it go away. And this is not a lot of money. It's it's probably a few hundred bucks to possibly end this. It's cute that you think 10 voice lessons could cost a few hundred Yeah, but maybe bucks. where who knows where she lives? Maybe they're in a place where voice lessons are cheaper. Yeah. Anyway, I think to 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 really focus in on our answer here, mm. I think that you should locate a teacher in your area who is reputable and by oh, and reputable- also vet them. Have a call. See how see how see how nice they are. If they're super nice, like I love singing. It's so wonderful. <laughs> and I love just hearing what my I, students. I said no, reputable. you don't want that. I said reputable. You want a teacher who gets results. And so get someone yeah. who is N- at least nasty. employed by mean. your local university. A total jerk. <laughs> Yeah, you talk to them on the phone. They say, yeah, who is this guy? What has he got? How many years has he been singing? Okay, great. Yeah, it's 200 bucks. All right, let's go. That reminds me actually of when I tried to get you guitar lessons, which by the way, wasn't a hint about your guitar playing. Oh my God. (laughs) Was this? Oh my God. It wasn't. I love your guitar playing. It's because I wanted you to hone your craft. Hone my craft. It was terrible and annoying you. You should totally say that. She should totally say, I, you know, I got you this gift because I want yeah. you to hone your craft. Yeah, because it's so wonderful. I want it to be even more wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. You want more responsibilities at work singing? Oh, my hone God. This it. is such a great idea. It's such a great and idea. And also, the great part about this is that she wins twice. Oh, yeah. She looks like a saint mm-hmm. and she gets what she wants. Yeah, because he becomes a decent singer. But I mean, not but uh, not to suggest no, that voice lessons are going to. Yeah, fix he's everyone. not going to become a great singer, but he might learn that he's not a good singer. Either way, you got to find a teacher who's a dick. <laughs> Very important. OK, I disagree with that. But first, I want to touch on the fact that he sounds off key. I think there is probably an element to his technique because of the amount he's singing and the amount he loves it. I think he probably thinks he's in tune. Usually someone who sings as much as he's singing, if they're singing off key, it's a technical thing and not an ear thing. Usually, not always, usually. Because usually you don't hear someone who's singing off tune, singing all the time. Well, unfortunately, he may be tone deaf, which is a terrible situation. I'm going to assume that's not the case. I hope it's not. It's Yeah, it's very unlikely that someone completely tone deaf is just singing all the time thinking they sound great. Oftentimes it's technical and this can be fixed with technique. You've taken some lessons before. Mm. This is what the professionals do. They never stop studying. This is true. And by the way, and just to like really, really gel all our our, uh, thoughts on this. Yeah. You can tell the teacher ahead of time. No, no. No, no, Listen, you're paying. That's unethical. You're just paying. You're just telling the teacher, listen. No, I, 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 I won't entertain this. I can't this. take it anymore. No, I, I he's, won't entertain he's this. He's so out of tune. It's horrible. I won't entertain this because and, and that's unethical. It's not fair to go behind his back like that. 
Yeah, but the teacher doesn't need to. The, look, the teacher's going to know. I love it. it's, it's not fair to go behind his back like that. We're having a full conversation. Yeah, we're <laughs> before, the whole last 20 minutes have been behind his back. <laughs> the point is, is that a teacher, if given a free pass, like, listen, I don't want you to mince words when it comes to his pitch. Like, I want you to really go at him. No. The teacher's going to know. She's going to, he or she will know that they have license to really be aggressive with that. But otherwise they might be too nice. You can say, listen, let loose, just let her rip. <laughs> okay, you're not going to do that. Respectfully, Andy. Understood. But S, I think hopefully this conversation has given you something to hold on to. I mean, ideally you don't have an elephant in the room with your partner and you can just say what you think. But the, to me, this this is sort of intertwined with his pride, his identity, a hobby that he clearly enjoys. Let's hope that this could be salvaged instead of snuffed. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think we've got a great plan for her. <laughs> 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 okay and depending on what city she's in i could probably help recommend someone yeah that's true okay all right i'm excited about this <laughs> this is such a we need an update question oh yeah but like long term because mm -hmm. you don't fix technical stuff like this overnight no i also would like a before and after recording so just secretly record before and then sometime in the distant future we'll hear the after all right s best of luck to you I have faith in this one. Me too. Okay, good luck. All right then, Andy, I think that's a wrap for this Q&A session. Yeah, that was good. Hard, harder than it should have been. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, you know, the questions, they're not always easy. I, I really make an effort, by the way, to not just take softballs. No, it's good. We can't... To our detriment, no. maybe, because yeah. this was a struggle. Softballs are great. <laughs> They really are. That's it. I don't have anything to add to that. I just personally don't think we're necessarily helping everybody by just doing easy questions over and over again. I agree. So, so even if you disagree with us, what I really hope to bring about is a conversation. It's like lifting weights. Like if we keep lifting five pound weights, we're going to be scrawny. <laughs> scrawny Q&A people. <laughs> yeah. So gra I'm gradually implementing 10 pound 15 pound weights. Yeah, we're getting very beefy. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram, tell your friends, leave us Apple and Spotify podcast ratings and reviews, and generally do all the things that you would do to support and keep alive a podcast you enjoy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye. Dear Shandy.